Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's Greenleaf, season four, episode four, entitled The Common Enemy. I'll give a review as I recap the entire episode. It's coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. We have Bob Whitmore. He's back in town and he's in Grace's office explaining to her that Fairview Church used to have about 1,500 people in attendance every Sunday. Now it's dwindled down to about 200. And Grace gives him that look like, Okay. <laughs> but he goes on to explain, I need you to go to Fairview and see if it's a good fit. And Grace is wondering, why am I going to speak to Fairview? And he's telling her in such a way that he wants her to convince them that maybe they can merge and maybe they can start to become together with harmony and hope. And he says, oh, and by the way, the congregation is white. Once again, Grace is sitting there like, okay. <laughs> Bob tells Phil, do you remember that last sermon that I gave for the 4th of July? Um, it really wasn't me. Let's see if we can change that up a little bit. And you can tell Phil is really tired of doing and representing Bob in every which, which way. He's doing everything for Bob and he looks pretty exhausted from all of the errands and all of the work that he does with Bob, but he doesn't pull back because of course he's bound to him in some way. And I think this season we'll find out why he can't just get up and quit. AJ is getting settled at his new place as Grace helps him to unpack and get a little bit more familiar with the apartment. And he's in the kitchen and he's cooking up a bit. And she says, oh, you, you're cooking. Did you learn how to cook from, you know, and she was suggesting, did you learn how to cook like they're from jail? And he's like, no, you people think that, you know, when we go to jail, we learn how to do certain things there. And she says, you people. He goes, well, yeah, pretty much meaning anybody that's judging him from the outside looking in. And he says, no, I learned how to cook from one of my foster families and they cooked a lot and I learned a little something, something from them. And Grace says, well, you know, yeah, you know, Sophia's dad is a chef. And he says, well, yeah, I know. And she seems surprised, but he lets her know that he's done a little research himself. Hmm, that's foreshadowing, good to know. We got Carissa. Whoa, if you talk about a character, I'm getting tired, <laughs> tired of. We got Carissa and Jacob. They are at a realtor's office, and it looks like the name of the company is called City on a Hill. And they are discussing the closing offers for their land. And she says, well, this seems like a wonderful idea, and we'll have a yoga. You guys have a yoga facility? This seems like a really good idea. And she tells Jacob, you know, well, what do you think? And he's like, yeah, it seems like you know, we'd be making a good decision. So the gentleman says, well, I'll get the paperwork and I'll get that going and we should have it ready and prepared by what, noon today? And she says, yes. And he says, let's just indulge in a little champagne. And Jacob says, it's the middle of the day. And Carissa was like, let's just go for it. Let's just have a little splash, just a little, just a little taste taste. So they sit down and he's looking reluctant to sell the land, but she's pretty excited. The gentleman comes back, has the champagne. They make a cheers on their future possible endeavor when they get all of the paperwork together. And she notices that the gentleman has these very particular cufflinks. And she says, oh, those are really nice. And she says, Jacob, don't you like those? He's like, you know, you know they I, you know. <laughs> and they proceed to cheers. And Jacob is just like, whatever it takes to make her happy but, but when they sit down Carissa shares a very seductive eye contact with the gentleman he kind of gives her a look like well hey hey but she doesn't exactly say uh, leave me alone with her eyes either Bishop receives an invitation to come and speak for a Sunday for some, another pastor that's going out of town. And Lady May just, you know, she's not really feeling it. And she says, well, you know, you're going to preach there? And he tells her, it's just one Sunday. I'm not preaching here at Harmony and Hope, but if I have an invitation, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to go and preach because it's one thing to just hide out in the shadows. Like, I have to stay active and I have to enjoy what I'm doing. And as they're speaking, 
Grace comes in and she tells him, well, I spoke to Bob and he's back in town and he's got Judy with him. And Judy was someone we were, inter uh, we were introduced to um, an episode ago. So we know that that's his daughter. And Lady May says, for somebody that owns like a thousand churches, he, he sure is all up in odds. Like he always him. Like what do you want? Bill tells Charity, look, if I don't get some dirt soon, we both could be working at the post office. Like, we ain't, we ain't gonna have no job. I need you to get some dirt, okay? Because I need something I can work with, and I need it ASAP. Charity says, well, okay, I'll see what I can do. We have Lady May, Bishop, and Grace. They're in a room speaking, and Grace explains to them how Bob wants her to talk with Cal from Fairview to convince him to do this merge. And Bishop says... You know, what's interesting is that I know what he's doing. Think about this. Even though you have many churches that are of blended ethnicities, how often do you see one of that's a mega church, that's a blended church that is led by somebody that's black? So in other words, he, he, he explains that I know what he's doing. He wants you to come in, some black person. He wants you to get everybody riled up, build up that attendance, right? Get everybody coming. And then when you're done doing that work, then we won't need you anymore. So get everybody interested to start coming to the church. Let people let them know, let them know that that church is interesting and they can come here. Start to bring up those numbers. He's using you as a tool. And he's saying, you know, mm, you might not want to fall for that. I see the Okie Minoke. And Lady May and Grace, they understand where he's coming from. And they start to say, well, yeah, that does make sense. Lady May calls Corinne. And as soon as she calls Corinne, Corinne is like, well, I didn't do anything wrong. And Lady May is like, congratulations. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, that lets us know that Corinne probably slips up a little too much than anyone prefers. But anywho, she proceeds to call her and ask her, who has Bob's schedule for this weekend? And she says, well, me. And Lady May is just like, oh, wonderful. Because she knows Corinne is going to give her what she needs. And it's obvious that Lady May has some ideas brewing in her head of what's coming up next. Sophia comes back home and she is not hesitant in venting to her mother and saying, I snuck back in the house. Nobody knows that I'm here. But I can't keep hiding your secret. You need to let the cat out of the bag about your secret. Don't expect me to lie for you. And oh, wow, you preach one thing, but yet you're the same as anybody else. You know, and I want to say, uh, duh. <laughs> but Sophia does have a point, you know, that you're preaching one thing, but you're living a lie and you're keeping secrets. The clock is ticking on you telling the truth. And don't count on me to do your truth for you. Lady May and Carissa bump into each other at the Greenleaf house. And Carissa's like, oh, what are you doing? And Lady May is just like, oh, I'm just, you know, sending transcripts of one of my services that I had. And what are you up to? And she lets her know that somebody is interested in that land and they're making moves to go ahead and go forward and sell the land. And Lady May says, well, whatever Bishop told Jacob to do about the land, clearly that didn't reside to him and one, went in one ear and out the other. And clearly y'all are doing what y'all want to do. And Carissa says, you know, it's our land and we have the right to do to it or with it, whatever we want. Let her know, look, we grown over here. <laughs> okay. And Lady May tells her, you know, Eve was able to to eat from that tree and it got her in trouble and everybody else Oh, and our printer is low on ink and let me get somebody to go out and get some ink Y'all know you don't want to go ahead and use it now and girl everybody know you hate to wait Ooh, shade honey. So Sophia is talking to Zora and Zora's just like, you know I hate to say this, but after all that talk you gave me about staying here and spending time with the family, you just up and left. Like, what's up with that? And I hate to admit it, but I was all up in my feelings. And Sophia said, you know, I just had an argument with my mom and it was something stupid and I had to just hurry up and get out of here. But in the meantime, you know, I'm going to go leave and spend some time with, I think his name was Roberto, spend some time with him and catch up. And Zora was just like, oh, so y'all back together again? And she's just like, girl, it's complicated. As she's doing that, you notice that Sophia, and they did this on purpose, it was a detail, she's packing clothes into a bag and there's one particular sweater that they emphasize that she kind of holds up and looks at and folds it up and puts it in her bag, foreshadowing. 
Sophia gets to AJ's new apartment because she does tell Grace earlier in the episode that she's been communicating with AJ because that's her brother. And when she gets there, she's sitting down and she's talking to him. And you notice that they're both drinking alcohol. AJ's pretty comfortable with it. He's taking down the swigs pretty easy. And we have Sophia. She's sitting on, on the bed and she's sipping on it and she's barely getting it down. And she says, well, here's to trying new things. They talk and he discusses how, you know, when he turned 18, his foster family just kicked him out. And she couldn't believe that, wow, after 18, they kicked you out. And she says, he says, well, yeah, those were my foster parents. He sees it that they saw that after I was 18, that was it. And they looked at me as a check. So I'm 18 and here you go. You get kicked out. And Sophia tells him, I'm not my mother. That's my mom. I'm of her, but I'm not my mom. I want to be here for you as your sister. And he says, you know, you and your mom, y'all make a lot of promises. But what I'm interested in is y'all keeping them. And we see that Sophia's getting a little buzzed. And she says, well, that's great. Mm, but I'm finna. Yeah. So she lays down and she goes to sleep. And AJ covers her for the night. Grace goes to see Cal Weaver. And he is the preacher of Fairview Church. And he he's very confused about why why she's there and she tells him well you know Bob wanted me to talk to you and you know just get some information from you and he says I just I know we're going through a tough time but what else can I do you know harmony and hope you know they're like the army you know they're giving us somewhere to be they're feeding us and we're on their payroll there's really not too much wiggle room for me to move around when I also reached out to the other churches, the white congregations, to do certain things, and he found out about it. When Bob found out about it, I felt like I had to go on back on the paper. And Grace says, go back on the paper, and he's just like, yeah, like a puppy. Like, he's keeping me trained to do certain things. And they share a moment of, hmm, I get what you mean. Carissa is talking to Phil about some information about her school because he was inquiring about it, what they do, who they are, etc. And when she does that, she hands him a folder and she notices that Phil has the same cufflinks that the realty um, owner had on. And she says, I know this is a crazy question, but where did you get those cufflinks? And he says, oh, it's just a gift from Bob. You know, this represents me working for, for him for about five years. And she has this boo-boo the fool look on her face like, oh, well, uh, let me know where I can get them so I can get some for Jacob. And he says, well, no, these are custom made. So we already know that the realty company is working for Bob or with Bob. So we already know there's some stank dank going on there. One thing that tickled me is that when Carissa left the office after she knew what she knew, after she found it, found it out, I hate the directorial shot on her face. It was off. It's like she left the office like, <laughs> like it looks so weird. I'm like, oh, they could have cut that out. It looked terrible. So Charity is going to her information plug, okay, Miss Corinne. And she says, well, I have this special somebody that really is interested in Grace, but I need to know if Grace is available. And Corinne's like, well, why don't you just ask her, you know, and, and what's up? I thought you liked Phil. And she's like, me and Phil, you know, I hate him. And somebody's in front of her looking back like, what? And she's like, I don't hate him, girl. I just turn back around my business. But <laughs> she asked, I really want to know because somebody inquiring about Grace, um, what about Noah? And Corinne says, well, you know, Noah came and Charity's fishing and digging like, well, he came and he only talked to Grace. And Corinne says, well, yeah, there's nothing married there. Plus, Noah is married. And Charity is like, well, what's going on? What do you know? And Corinne is telling her, okay, look, time out. I'm done. Quit trying to ask me for questions. I really need you to leave me alone. So, Sophia returns to Zora's cabin the next day. And she's cutting out some cutouts. And Sophia's like, oh, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I'm finishing up the stuff with Little Saints that you said that you were going to help me on. But I'm already finished with that. And also that you're aligned A-S-S-B-I-T-C-H. And I'm like, oh, no, she didn't. And Sophia's just standing there like, 
see what had happened. Well, she was like, no, 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 see, see, see. I called Roberto because I was worried about where you were and I was trying to see where you were. And he said, girl, he didn't know you was in town. Oh, oh, and also, <laughs> uh, I know you've been drinking because you smell like alcohol. And I'm like, Zara, like, the way you were acting last season, you got the nerve to be asking somebody where they been. Okay. Lady May reaches out to Bob and they have a little lunch or brunch and she sits down with him to let him know, I heard from a bird that you're pretty much doing your little thing with Fairview, trying to blend and do all of this other stuff and it's a white congregation and I just want to drop a little knowledge on you that, you know, with black churches since slavery, it has been our place to praise and to to be with our own people and bob says well you know a church is meant for everybody and the church is meant to represent all ethnicities which is true and we want to paint that picture we can't preach one thing and then do another and lady may says well that's that's what you don't understand even though it's good to be diversified and to do all of that, I mean, our, our church churches should develop how they naturally develop. You're preaching the same words. So I get what Lady May is saying. And she says, with this merger and what, you, what you're trying to do, it's a positive that you're trying to make or that you insinuate to make. But what do we lose as the, as the black church uh, evolves? Like, what are we losing in its process so far as culturally? And he says, you know, this is just an idea. And I promise you that with the information, this is just some inquiries here and there that you have nothing to worry about. And he holds his hand out, insinuating, let's shake on it, and that you don't have to worry about that. Oh, Miss Charity, oh my goodness. She calls Noah, and that she doesn't get a response, but she goes to his voicemail. And she says, well, hey, Noah, um, the nerve of you to come here and not say anything. Huh. So being very deceptive, she knows that apparently he didn't want everybody to know that he was there. And she leaves that voicemail. Tisk, tisk, Miss Charity. Bia has her bags and her jacket and she's look, she looks like she's about to head back on out. She's had enough of this Greenleaf family. And before she can leave, she accidentally runs into Lady May. And Lady May says, Sophia, you, you home? I didn't even know you were here. I have so many questions to ask you about school and all this other stuff. And she's just like, I really have to go. Um, I need to get to the airport. You know, I'm out of here. And Lady May says, what is this going back and forth in this in this negative energy? What is going on between you and your mother? Like, what is happening? And she says, well, why don't you ask my mother about that? So I have to go. And she gives her a hug. And as she's giving her a hug, Grace is coming down the stairs. And she says, what is going on with you two? Why is it this back and forth? You coming, she going, what is happening? And Sophia kind of whispers to Grace and says, you need to go ahead and come out with this truth. You know, I'm not gonna lie for you. I'm not gonna cover for you. You need to tell this truth and you need to let everybody know what's going on. And pretty much to show you how serious I am, I am not coming back here until everybody knows your little secret. Grace pretty much lets down some tears and Lady May wants to know what is going on. And she's like, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. And Lady May says, well, I've met with Bob to talk to him. And Grace is just wondering, okay, well, why did you do that? You know, what was the purpose of you doing that? And Lady May, said, Lady May says, well, I think it was important for me to talk to him. And Grace says, I could handle it. You didn't even have to do that. We have Charity and Judy. They are singing this default harmony and hope song that has no soul whatsoever it is oh and welcome Lord. and charity is just grinning and just really trying to get through the performance and everybody in the audience is just blank like what's going on <laughs> and they push through that song and they even got the nerve to have a banjo child up there bing -a -ding -a -bing -a -ding, and everybody's sitting there like where the guitar at what happened and it's just everybody in the audience is just looking at each other and they're giving little side remarks like what's going on what's happening but bob is just 
mm, really loving it. And every time Charity tries to add a little soul to it, oh, a little ad lib or something, Judy is pulling her closer like, mm, don't do that. Uh-uh, don't do that. And every time they hit another note, la, Charity trying to add a little something, something, and Judy brings her in closer like that ain't the way it goes. So we can see that that, that could be some future beef in the next few episodes because you know Judy going to have something to say, child. But anywho, they get through this terrible soulless song. And Grace gets up and she speaks of a sermon using Moses as an example of how he used God, he used God's people to get to unity. Even though they were going through what they what they were going through with Pharaoh, Pharaoh wanted to do any and everything to keep them divided, but all it did was bring God's people closer together. And Bob is listening to the insinuation of the sermon, and he understands what she's trying to get to. And you even have Cal, who's on the stage, Cal Weaver, and he's listening to this sermon. He's, he's standing up, and he's clapping, because you understand what Grace is trying to say, that Moses, through the storm, the purpose of, of it all was to bring God's people together, was to have unity. And the more that the Pharaoh pushed back towards God's people, all it did was bring them closer and closer. And all it did in his demise, in Pharaoh's demise, what was he lost his son. So in other words, you can try all of these things to hurt, hurt God's people, but all that it's gonna do is bring God's people closer together in order to get rid of what caused them to split and to have static and negative energy in the first place. So everybody's standing up and clapping because it is a very inspirational sermon. Bishop, after the sermon, and Lady May, they go up to Grace and they tell her, wow, that was a beautiful sermon. That was just really wonderful. I loved your message. I loved how you pulled it together. And then we have Phil that says, well, I need you to come to my office. And Bob wants to speak to you as if she's going to the principal's office and she says well your office and he says yes so she goes to that office child because ain't like she got a choice you see aj at his apartment he's starting to drink more because the day before he was drinking with sophia now he's drinking again and you see this very still and lonely apartment and sadly even though he has his own place he's very lonely. Even though he's met his sister, he's very lonely. Even though he's talked with Grace, he's lonely. So we are seeing this bitter, dark loneliness and sadness that AJ is experiencing. So Carissa and Jacob, they are at the, the realtor's table prepared to sign the last bit of documentation in order to close the deal on selling the land. Even with the information she has, she doesn't turn to Jacob and tell him anything. But instead, she's looking at the paperwork and she's thinking, should I sign it? Should I not sign it? Should I say something? Should I not say something? But in still, Miss Carissa, she turns the paper on the documentation and she signs on the dotted line, putting it into fruition, signing the paperwork to sell the land. Carissa didn't say anything, even with the information that she knew that the realtors worked for Harmony and Hope, that the realtors are working with or even for Bob Whitmore. She could not see past what she wanted, which was that house. And now the land is in black and white as being sold to Carissa. Why? <laughs> to that sermon, Bob tells Grace, okay, what you just did, that sermon you just did? No, 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 no. That's not in the protocol. You are an employee of Harmony and Hope, okay? You do what we say. Even everything in your office, everything in this church is not yours. Even the desk, the chair, that's a loan. It, 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 it's pending to be yours. Nothing in here is yours. So keep that in mind. Stay according to what we agree on, what you can talk about, how you can talk about it, and then go from there. Don't do that again because your sermon was so inspirational. Now Kyle, he's talking about not merging, and he's been inspired to 
to do more in his church, to be more involved and think about the numbers and think about how he can change how things are going at his church. And that's all for your sermon. He's, he's inspired. And Grace says, well, what's wrong with that? Like, what's wrong with him being encouraged? If you own everything, what is so bad about that so-called little church or quote-unquote what they're doing? And you just got this church. It's, it's harmony and hope. This is new. So why don't you give that time before you go pressing on to other churches? And he gives a very decisive warning. You pull another stunt like that, you and your family, y'all out of here. Y'all will be out. You, your sister, everybody. So watch your steps. Noah calls Grace in the bar getting his swig on, his swerve on. And he tells her in his little, you know, little tipsy mode, well, my wife kicked me out. And she's like, well, why? What's going on? And he says, well, apparently Charity left a voicemail message saying that she didn't appreciate me coming to town and not saying anything to her. And of course, Isabel's thinking, me and you got something popping off again, and she can't help but to think that. So me being honest, I told her, yeah, I saw you when I came there. And she just like, bruh, you could have lied, bruh. <laughs> Grace so used to lie. She like, why did you tell the truth? But I guess he saw it as like, let me stop lying. Yeah, I told her I was there. So, but I guess he thought he was just going to be digging himself in a deeper hole. So he told her, yeah, I was there. But anyway, he says, you know what? And since we on the phone, I'm letting you know I'm coming to Memphis and I'm going to get to know my son. Click. And Grace, of course, she just standing there like, uh-oh, spaghettios. <laughs> Grace. But anywho, that was the end of the episode. So, wow, Carissa did what I predicted she would do. She would go ahead no matter what, what the consequences were, no matter what she found out. I estimated in the last episode, in the last review that I did, a recap that I did, I said she's going to sell that land. And it doesn't matter how she gets it because she's thinking about that house. She's thinking about getting out of that green leaf house. She's had it. She's had it with Jacob. She's had it with that family, period. So I knew that she was going to go ahead and do that, even knowing what she knew. Also, I have a prediction for uh, this season is that in this episode, we have Bishop going to another church to preach. So that's going to start a wildfire because you know he's going to give a good sermon and people are going to wonder why why is it he t teaching at harmony and hope what is going on what is going on why isn't he preaching you like people are gonna be getting mad so <laughs> he's gonna do that so that's coming we still have to remember that jacob is still the mentor right to the pro ball player when he finds out <laughs> that information about harmony and hope owning that land that's gonna push him away even more especially maybe being in that environment with the groupies and the lifestyle it's coming it's gonna come this season and carissa is making it easy for the clean up woman to take your back she you carissa you're making it easy boo boo you are not well liked this season and i didn't like it last season i know it's just the character but i didn't like the character but anywho <laughs> some other information about sophia 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 she says she's not coming back till she tells her truth well now grace is backed into a corner you have no choice but to say the truth or or to let out the truth if grace doesn't let it out anytime soon we're gonna have either aj or noah tell somebody or miss charity is gonna put two and two together she's gonna see aj and she's gonna let everybody know her dirt now with charity there could be two options either she can know some information and share it because she's really desperate and she wants a certain role but it all will backfire she'll give all of the information that phil needs but in the end it will not work out for charity she will not get the role that she's expecting doing all of this dirty work because if you know if you don't figure out charity you're working for deceptive 
people, what makes you think they will keep a promise? Because they won't. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And also follow me on Instagram. Same profile name. Official bun underscore E. <laughs>